Today is a very, very special day. Today is a day for smart, respectful clothes. Today, we are filming and driving my all-time dream car. Welcome to the Lamborghini Miura. This stunning, fully restored P400 Lamborghini Miura is currently for sale at JD Classics. Link is provided in the description below. We're here today at JD Classics in Chelmsford. Many thanks to JD Classics for providing this stunning Lamborghini Miura for us to review today. Very, very much appreciated. The Lamborghini Miura has a model name of P400. Why P400? Well, P stands for posterior, in effect meaning the location of the rear mid-engined naturally aspirated V12, and 400 standing for four liter. Well, it's actually a 3.9 liter, but we won't split hairs on that. Folklore would have it that the Lamborghini Miura came about from a feud between Fruscio Lamborghini and Enzo Ferrari, resulting in Enzo Ferrari telling Fruscio that he was just a tractor driving farmer, which enraged Fruscio so much that he went away and started his own competing company called Automobile Lamborghini. The Lamborghini Miura is classified as supercar genesis. It is the first mid-engine two-seater performance car that initialized the whole supercar genre. This particular Miura is a 1967 early P400 resplendent in stunning Rosso Miura with a Nero Fintapelli interior. The star of the interior though is that stunning five-speed gated shifter with the chrome reverse lockout. Such an iconic design. Automobili Lamborghini only intended to produce GT cars. The first car was a 350 GT and the second car was a 400 GT which in effect was an updated more powerful version of the 350. Fruscio wanted to build something that was special that was in competition to the Ferraris because the 350 and the 400 looked very similar to the early Ferraris. So Fruscio decided to put a very young engineering team together to build and design a very special car and the production of that was the Lamborghini Miura. The Lamborghini Miura was in production from 1966 to 1973, so only for a duration of seven years. 762 cars were ever made, there's only around 400 remaining, only 24 were right-hand drive. The 762 cars were split across the three model range, P400, P400S and P400SV, SV standing for super veloci, meaning super fast. There's also one highly tuned special edition model made called the Yota, and there's only ever been one other Yota that's ever been made, and that's the Lamborghini Aventador. The styling of the Miura was won by the Bertone Styling House and one Marcello Gandini at only 27 years old put together the initial designs of the Lamborghini Miura in only two days and based the styling on the Ford GT40. Some famous names ordered the Lamborghini Miura. Rod Stewart, Miles Davis and Eddie Van Halen, just to name a few. Of course, most people will recognize the iconic styling of the Lamborghini Miura from the film produced in 1969, The Italian Job. This particular car is an early 1967 P400, sold out of the dealership Monzeglio in Italy. From Italy, it then spent a period of time in France and then from France it travelled across to America where, where a lot of Lamborghini Miuras resided. In 1990, the car travelled back to Paris, France where it underwent a full restoration by GTO and Corserie Lecoq. That restoration entailed upgrading the thin chassis, upgrading the brakes from P400 to P400S standard and upgrading the suspension and wiring to the SV standard. In 2007, the car went to the engine specialist Edmund Ciclet to have a full factory engine replacement. And that also included a new sump configuration to separate the engine and transaxial oil. The original car had combined sump that actually mixed 
the oil for the engine and transaxle. So here it is, the heart of the Lamborghini Miura. A 3.9 litre, 24 valve, naturally aspirated, transverse mounted V12. 350 brake horsepower, 272 pound foot of torque. 0 to 62 in 6.7 seconds and a top speed of 174 miles per hour, revving to a maximum of 7,000 RPM. Back in the day, this was top end specification. The idea for mounting the engine in a transverse configuration came in actual fact from the Austin Morris Mini. The Austin Morris Mini was the first car to have its engine mounted in a transverse configuration. This configuration necessitated Lamborghini to design the engine and gearbox into a single transaxle which was mounted behind the engine itself. And this design in itself was very unique and it meant that they had to do away with a flywheel and they used the inertia and the mass of the gear mechanism to create and to balance the engine. In addition, while we're here, we can see part of the actual weight saving design that they used when they were designing the chassis. The chassis was designed by a person that had aeronautical background, so they actually made holes, they cut out holes in the chassis to save weight. The design and location of the groundbreaking V12 made for some unfortunate safety issues. With the carburetor fuel lines positioned directly above the hot exhaust, in the event of a fuel leak, petrol would fall onto the hot exhaust, causing the supercar to go up in flames. Possibly the reason why so many mirrors no longer exist. While we've got the clamshell open, I'll talk you through some of the design features of this car to be able to open up this clamshell. You've got two clamshells, fore and aft, one that opens up the front. Now this section, they tried to push a lot of the weight as possible forward in the Lamborghini Miura because they had all the weight of the engine in the back, that massive V12 lump. The actual weight distribution is 45% front and 55% rear. So it's not too unbalanced. Although these cars apparently over 70 miles per hour do lift quite a bit on the front because they just didn't have designed downforce at that time. The clamshell opens by two pins either side. So on the front clamshell, you have a pin here and a pin this side. If we just open up this door, you open up the door by pressing this button and this opens up the door. And if we look at the rear clamshell design, you pull this pin out and that enables you to, and there's another pin on the other side and that enables you to remove or to open up the rear clamshell. The design is very similar on the front. Now you've got to be very careful that you don't leave these pins out and try and close the door because it will literally slam the door into the pin. If you're enjoying the video so far of us filming this stunning Lamborghini Miura, then please think about giving the video a thumbs up. Very important for our channel. And if you like our style of content, then please think about subscribing. Now back to the video. The Lamborghini Miura took the Miura name from a famous Spanish fighting bull breeder, which was also designed into the new Lamborghini's badge on the bonnet. The Miura designers took it a step forward by designing the features of a bull into the supercar such that when both doors are open, it resembles the horns of a bull. <laughs> Driving the Lamborghini Miura. I can't believe I'm saying that. I'm driving a Lamborghini Miura, my all time dream car. First impressions are it's a very, very old car. It's a very, very old car. And my feet are far too big for the pedals. The brakes are non existent because they're drum. So they take a fortnight to stop the car. I've got, the v, I've got this massive V12, 3.9 litre V12 right behind my head, which sounds absolutely awesome. Very, very mechanical, as you can hear. Very different to modern day supercars. So this is supercar genesis. This is the first ever supercar. Incredible. It feels very light on the steering as well. 
Now I'm having to really think from the point of view of braking, so I have to start thinking about braking quite early. I'm not going to give the car an extensive review because it's the Lamborghini Miura. <laughs> Um, and it's a 1967 car, so it's very old. It feels very agricultural in its, in its um, sound and in the gearbox. It's very old style mechanical, which of course you just don't get nowadays with modern cars. And remember this is a quad carburetted car, so it's four downdraft jaw choke Weber carburetors. So it's not injection. Modern cars, all modern cars nowadays are fuel injected and most of them, even especially supercars, are direct fuel injection. And they are, all use electronic timings, electronic ignitions. This has none of that. This is old style. <laughs> the gauge layout is pretty good. You've got your rev counter on the right hand side and your speedo on the left hand side. And you've got all your general statistics, all your general stats, temperature, oil pressure, etc. all on the right hand side here in the amperage of your battery. Forward visibility is bang on, no problems whatsoever. So with regards to visibility, forward visibility is really good. Really thin A-pillars, you've got wide expanse of glass all the way around. So no problems with regards to forward visibility, but rearward visibility is shocking. You can see through the slat of the rear view mirror, to some degree but with regards to looking behind you to pull out through the door mirrors the visibility is shocking they're so minute they're pretty much pointless the car feels quite spacious inside apart from the fact I'm in the usual Italian driving position so I've got my knees right up against me and my arms fairly stretched out <coughs> So not the most comfortable of driving positions, but that's because they're designed for Italians. The sound is visceral. It sounds absolutely awesome. The clutch is quite light, but the, the, clutch, is quite, the clutch is quite light. Um, the biggest problem so far is the brakes. You have to think about 10 minutes before you want to slow the car down to actually start pressing the pedal nerve-wracking to begin with but you get used to it because of course it's hub brakes they're not discs notwithstanding they're certainly not carbon ceramics which is what you have on modern supercars this is hubs this is old style <laughs> holy shit I'm driving a Lamborghini Miura <laughs> I never thought this day would ever come and it's a fully restored Lamborghini Miura as well, so no pressure. <laughs> it's incredibly generous of JD Classics to allow me to drive this car. Very, very kind of them. I think it's fair to say it's not going to set the world alight with its acceleration. It's not to 62, 6.7 seconds, and there's a top speed of 174 miles per hour. Personally, I would want to get over 100 in it, to be honest, with the, due to the value and because of it being a very old car. And because of the brakes. But the suspension is actually all right. The suspension's not too bad at all. It's actually quite well sprung, which I'm quite surprised about. I thought it'd be rock hard, but I mean, it's not, it's quite stiff. It's not what I would call as really supple, but it's okay. It's not, not too bad at all. Remember, this car wasn't designed for these awful English roads. It was designed for smooth Italian roads as they were back then. I know the roads aren't so smooth now in Italy, but they certainly were a lot better back then. Even though it shouldn't be that light, it's, it's, 
it's, um, it's 45% at the front, 55% weighted at the rear. So it's quite evenly weighted. It shouldn't be too light on the front, although they are very well known for lifting at 70 miles per hour, lifting the front end at 70 miles per hour and losing their stability. But again, this is a 1967 car. What do you expect? Having said that, I did expect the steering to be very heavy, but it just isn't. It's nice and light. Um, it's really easy to manoeuvre, apart from the fact you can't see anything behind. Pulling out of junctions is pretty much a nightmare. But any, never, any negative aspects that I quote, or any, for any negative aspects that I mention, I don't care guys. It's a bloody Lamborghini Miura. Even though it's a whacking great 3.9 litre V12, 350 brake horsepower, 272 pound foot of torque, it's not that torquey, but so you have to keep the revs up and it's an old V12, you know? So you're not gonna get fantastic performance. It's only 350 brake horsepower and the weight is 1,293 kilograms. So it's fairly light being an old style car, but the power to weight ratio isn't that great. So you're not gonna get blistering performance. And this is why you've got 0 to 62 in 6.7 seconds. placing the car it's actually apart from the fact it feels quite wide and you, and I'm a left hand and it's a left hand drive configuration it's not that bad because you've got these two front hand wings um, which really allow you to place the car very well going round corners almost surprised I'm saying that it does feel long though and because you're very low in the car it does feel wide, but you've got a surprising amount of space inside the car, inside the cockpit. It's actually quite spacious, apart from the driving position, which is hell. I'm in the Italian style driving position, the standard Italian style driving position. You can't move the steering wheel fore and aft or up and down. So you're stuck with this. So my knees, I'm six foot one, my leg, my, my, I'm six foot one, most of my height is in my legs. My knees are up around the steering wheel and my arms are fairly outstretched. But it's not the most comfortable of positions. And it's not the most comfortable of positions. And my head is pretty much touching the ceiling. And as I say, most of my length is in my legs. So if you're tall bodied, forget it. You probably wouldn't get in this car. go through some pros and cons I mean how dare I do that on a Lamborghini Miura to be honest guys uh, but to go through some pros and cons it's a Lamborghini Miura it is just an incredible classic car to be able to drive I never thought I'd be able to drive a car like this I never thought I'd get the opportunity to drive a Lamborghini Miura thank you so much to JD Classic for providing this car for us to review incredible really really appreciated pros the v12 that outstanding incredible v12 that's mounted transversely behind us um, incredible motor i mean how the hell they squeezed that in it's only 21 inches long only and that's why they're able to, to squeeze it into the width of the car but they squeeze it in they did you know it's really tight in there at the back you can pretty much see here 
Um, the, the carburettors are right next to the rear of the car, right next to the bulkhead. So that glass panel there, that is the engine there. It's like six inches away from our heads at the back. The whacking great big V12, 3.9 litre V12. The negatives are all based around its age. Brakes are pretty poor. The steering is a bit loose, but hey, it's a Miura. <laughs> the way they've styled it is just absolutely drop dead gorgeous. Most beautiful car that's ever hit a road. Stunning. And the styling of the interior is absolutely awesome. Look at this Italian styling, incredible. And there you have it. I can now die a happy man. I've now driven my all time dream car, my all time dream supercar and the first ever supercar as as Chris Harris said, this is Supercar Genesis. Yeah!